Welcome to the first explanation video of the end of term 3 exam topics. It is area between curves. The first topic over here is to find the area between two curves using definite integration. Now, definite integration means you, you need to know the limits, apply and solve. So we will see how to do it. But before we go to the problem, let's see the formula which will be used. Now, area between two curves, let one curve be y equals f of x and another curve g of x. These are the limits a to b. You need to use this formula from a to b. a is the lower limit to the upper limit. The function f of x minus the other function g of x dx. Now, which function minus which other function? It's always the upper function minus the lower function. For example, this is the upper function, right? You need to subtract this function from the lower function. That's it. So up minus down. Top divided minus the bottom. That's it. So now we here we have the problem like this. Find the area bounded by the graphs of y equals 3 minus x and y equals x square minus 9. Now sometimes, most of the time, there won't be the graph given to you. So you need to draw graph. You need to have basic knowledge of graph. Now I will just tell you three important graphs. That is linear, square root, that is parabola and the cubic graph. Now if you have y equals x or if you have y equals minus x. Here the power is 1. If it's positive, the graph goes upwards because it's positive slope. Whereas negative means it's going downwards. This is x and y axis. This is x and y axis. So the graph is upwards and this is downwards. So this is about linear graph. Now let me draw the parabolas. Now what does parabola mean? It's just that the power over here will be 2 squared and even over here. When you are positive, it's upwards. It goes upwards like this. When it's negative, it goes downwards. It opens upwards and uh, when it's positive too, it opens upwards. Negative means over here it goes downwards. So this is the difference over here. Now the next thing, see look, whenever you have x squared, only x squared, it's upwards like this graph. Whereas there is minus x power 2, then it will be downwards. And the last one is cubic. So cubic is power 3 and over here power 3. So whenever there is positive cubic graph, the right side will go upwards and the left side goes downwards. Whereas the end behavior changes when it's negative. So the left side goes upwards and the right side goes downwards. This is the only difference. There's nothing else. So if you know these basic graphs, it's very, very helpful. Now over here, you might be thinking, what is this plus 3 or minus 3 and all these extra terms? Now look at this. What is the graph over here? It's minus x, isn't it? So minus x means it goes downwards. Now you can see this number is the y-intercept, that's plus 3. So at plus 3, it will be shifted, it will be translated at over here, the y-intercept is at 3. So this would be the first graph. Now what about this one, x square minus 9? You know x square graph is like this, but it's minus 9, we'll touch over here. So it will be at 9 over here, so it will open upwards at 9. The graphs are very rough sketches. You should just basic, uh, the basic knowledge is more than enough. Now it'll be something like this, you know, the graphs. From the basic knowledge of graph, it'll intersect over here and somewhere over here. I have no idea, but we have methods to solve for it. So this would be the graph somewhat like this. And you can see the graph. It does not match accurately. I don't have any answers, but approximately I could draw them. So you can see the upper function is 3 minus x, whereas the lower function is x square minus 9. I hope you're clear with the graphing, because if you do not graph, it is not possible for you to understand which is the upper function and which is the lower function. If you do not find that, you are not able to solve the problem. Now, here, you need to analyze the graph, check the upper function and the lower function. Then how do you find these points of intersections? If the graph is not there, you're drawing a rough graph, you won't get the accurate answers. So how would you do it? The points of intersection means these two functions are equal at that point. You can see intersecting means both the graphs touch at that point. 
whereas at where the x values and the y values are same for both the functions. So what does it mean? The y values, sorry, y values over here, even the x, but mainly y values are same, right? So it means y equals y because it's very hard to change the x and also consider y is equal to y. So equate these two equations, 3 minus x equals x squared minus 9. Now how would you solve it? You need to just bring it to the other side, minus x to the other side. It will be plus x, so x squared plus x. And 3 to the other side will be minus 9 minus 3, it will be negative 12. And now you can put it in the calculator and solve. If you're thinking how I got this, it's very simple. You need to go to mode, phi and 3, put it in the calculator, the coefficients. Before x squared it's 1, before x it's 1. And lastly, we have negative 12. So the answer is 3 and negative 3. That's the answer. So this is how we find the intersection point, which matches over here. They are at minus 4 and 3. So these are the limits. Basically, they are the limits. And then we have the functions, the upper function and lower function. So now you have to just substitute the values in the formula and solve. This is the formula which we have been through. All you need to do is substitute upper function f of x is 3x, 3 minus x, lower function x squared minus 9. The lower limit is negative 4. It starts with the lower limit to the upper limit until 3. All you did is substitution. Now, you can solve it using formula, but since this is in part A, you can directly use the calculator. Just press the symbol and put it in the calculator. It's 3 minus alpha x minus alpha x squared minus 9 close the bracket and the limits are from minus 4 until 3 and that is the answer 343 by 6 or 57.1666 so now over here you can use extra brackets but once you open a bracket be careful to close it be you know be extra cautious with the brackets because if you miss a simple thing in the bracket your answer will be wrong and you will not know it so this is very important so this is the answer and now if you want to solve manually you need to simplify this and then use integration and then apply the limits and solve it the answer will be the same area is 57.17 units um, since this is definite integrals it's better to save time by using calculator now you can see there are a few more questions over here same concept for the basic graph Say now we have a square root graph, it's something like this. If it is magnitude, it will be like this. So basic graphs, exponent graphs, check them all by yourself. Try them by yourselves. Do not look into the answers directly. Attempt few problems at least, just like how I've solved. Just attempt these. Equate these two equations. Put it in the calculator. Solve it. And then... You can check all the answers, the solved solutions, the methods, and also these graphs are being mentioned over here. So each and every problem solution is mentioned. It's just the upper function minus the lower function and directly put it in the calculator. It's all direct in calculator because it's definite integrals. So uh, you can just look into the answers one by one and do check your answers. So that is about the first topic. Please stay tuned for the next topics and the coming videos. And uh, please double check your graphs as well. See now here the graph. Uh, now one more thing is you do not need to draw the entire graph. Uh, one good question over here. See the thing is you should just know the basic knowledge. Magnitude. It's sharp like this. Now what about this rational function? Okay, You do not need to know the exact graphing. Just the basic knowledge. You know this will go down. So this is somewhere over here, the 2, right? It starts from here and then it reduces. So you know this is the upper function for sure. So all you need to do is find the intersection points. So equate it. And over here there are two terms because over here until this point, until this point, this is reducing the slope over here is reducing so it's minus x until zero so from minus one to zero this function is upper function minus lower function so it will be minus of minus x whereas over here it's positive x so upper function minus lower function will be just minus x 
So this is the thing. When you solve it in steps, you'll realize this until zero is a separate function. The answer is negative x. Why? Whenever a linear function, when it comes down, it's minus x. When it goes up, it's positive x. The slope is positive. That's why we have two things and then it's direct. You don't need to do all these derivations. You can just put this in calculator and you'll directly get this answer. Okay, now what happens is you will have an answer which is say in values like 0 0.54 or 64, okay? But your answer will be somewhat in LAN or pi by 3. You will have four options which, which is none of that is 0 0.64. All you need to do is solve it up, okay? Solve it up. Now, this will be 0 0.57 I believe. What I mean is now pi by 2, shift pi divided by 2 minus 1 so this is how you solve it it'll be 0 0.57 your answer whatever you get will be directly 0 0.5707 so that is how you can easily solve this and uh, please do check the answers after you solve by yourselves